Hello and welcome to another episode of Sketch Series, and we're going to do another Star Fox one. This is going to be a little bit more of a pinup edition. What I mean by pinup is it's going to be more of an action pose, not just a straight sketch of a character or concept pose. So I already have the sketch lines all done, and I'm just going to go straight in with my multi liner. And again, I'm using the LE pen, the 0 0.3 multi liner. And I'm going to throw down my simple lines here. For the sketch pose, uh, I kind of like to think about a couple of things. What elements am I playing with? How can I show energy? And how can I show emotion? So to show emotion, I use a lot of positioning. He's got a little bit of an arched back. His tail is erect. In other words, it's uh, like a frightened animal. Uh, its tail gets all poofy and big. Um, he's kind of he looks like he's jumping backwards um, So a lot of that shows emotion a little bit of fear and the way he's holding his gun is a little bit more frantic Than sharpshooter in other words. He's doing this quickly uh, And right away we're getting into positioning if we were to talk about positioning the way he's at an angle He's almost skewed to the page uh, and you can kind of see that he's skewed to the page by the way his legs are drifting forward. And you can kind of see the spiral bound of my sketchbook is uh, slightly slanting downward as he goes forward. Uh, you could just see it right there before I moved it, which means that he is jumping backwards definitely. Um, that is a very defensive jump, defensive posture, which means that this is a Star Fox that is afraid of what's coming or frantic of what he sees and decides, if I don't kill it, it's going to kill me. Uh, I like to think about that. I like to think about how to imply energy in, in, a, in a drawing. Now, here you can kind of see some of the changes I've made since the last design. I like to go with the uh, little outlines on the legs and on the shoes just to give it a little bit of texture. I'm going to throw in a little word right there. You can't really see it on the screen, but at the end you'll be able to see it. And I took away the striped tail because that's very raccoonish. That's very, uh, very much like a like a cat or a raccoon or something like that. Uh, some kind of marsupial, not really a fox. Foxes have the the bright part at the end of the tail. I was looking at pictures of foxes just to make sure that I understood coloring and how to color a fox. And uh, I came up with a much better color pattern, which we'll be getting into shortly. But uh, right here for my for my lettering, I'm not very good at lettering at all, so you can kind of see me fumbling through it and making a lot of mistakes. But this is how you learn. You work through your mistakes, and if you suck at something, you do it more until you suck less at it. And eventually, you won't suck at all at it, and you'll be okay at it. And then once you're okay, you can start to become good at it. That's uh, that's my line of thinking. Um, this is my uh, Pentel pocket brush pen. I uh, I got another one, it's working a lot better. And you can kind of see me going around outlining some of the sharp parts. I kind of messed up on the nose, so I made it a little bit more pudgy to cover up my flub there. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward drawing. It's nothing fancy, nothing too mind blowing. It's just a pretty straight shot there. But what I'm going to add in in a little while, once the coloring is finished, is some geometry. and framing and uh, framing my character. I've been talking a lot with a couple of my friends who are big movie buffs. One of them actually makes short films and they were talking a lot about framing and how you can really capture um, energy, you can capture emotion, you can capture all kinds of things with framing. So here I'm just coming in and making sure that my lines are clean and my thick lines are thick and the other ones are thin. Um, so that I get that nice contrast and really show a lot of uh, shadow, a lot of liveliness in my character that way. And uh, coming up here, we're going to move into, once I'm done here with my letters, we're going to move into the coloring phase. Now I'm not the greatest coloring artist in the world, but uh, we're going to attempt to see what happens here. Here are the markers that I'm going to start off with, mostly the top two. I kind of have that light brown there for his uh, his main fur, his the, the main part of his fur. And then I'm going to come in with a lighter brown later just to uh, add some lights and then give it some contrast. And that light peach that you see there, I'm going to be using that to smooth out the difference between the dark and the light brown 
which I will use. Um, so you can kind of see that here coming in with the lighter brown. I actually forgot to take a picture of this, but this is the GR8, and I think it is a Prismacolor, but it doesn't have writing on it. It's one of the uh, kind of hexagonal shaped ones that I use from time to time. And here I'm going in and adding in some of that lighting effect on the on the legs. Um, and again, this is just my sketchbook. If I were to actually do this, and I am working on something a little bit more serious with this stuff, I would do a lot more lighting effects and a lot more cool stuff with it just to make some of that um, lighting and some of that texturing pop. But for my sketchbook, uh, I decided to go with the... Let me break down the, the color scheme that I'm going with. I'm sticking with green. I'm sticking with gray and I'm sticking with orange and obviously uh, this character is brown um, and I decided to use a darker green so instead of using a very uh, saturated green it's a very desaturated green and I'm going to emphasize the desaturation by coloring the green parts gray and then going over it with a desaturated green marker so it gives it a green hue but it's not too much to distract and uh, clash with any of the colors. And uh, I just watched a cool video by NerdSync Productions, who are on YouTube, about colors in heroes. And uh, they were talking about primary colors and secondary colors, and what that tells you about a hero's origins and and uh, and values and all that jazz. It's a pretty cool video. It's about uh, six minutes long. It's pretty good if you want to check it out. Uh, look them up, NerdSync Productions. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome crew over there. So here I'm coming in with that light peach, and I'm just going to blend some of those tones, make sure that I've got some smoothing going on. And once I've done that, I have my dark gray laid. I laid it down there. And now I'm going to go in with a lighter gray and with my green, which you see at the bottom there. And uh, I'm going to go in. And oh, I forgot to take an image of the green, didn't I? That's super embarrassing. But it's a Prismacolor, it's a dark green, and I think it's 40% uh, or something like that. Um, here I'm coming in with the, with the light, light gray just to kind of fill that and give the, everything its shininess and its contrast. Now one thing that I didn't really think about was uh, the lighting. The reflective lighting should have been in the front where the gun is firing because that's where the main source of light in this drawing is. You can assume that there's one behind him, but it would have been more consistent to draw the one in the front. Now remember when I was talking about framing a little while ago? Well here's my framing. I'm going to have Star Fox popping out of this rectangle. But not only that, the rectangle isn't going to be straight up and down or straight side to side. I considered doing it straight horizontal, uh, but I felt like it would take away from the effect of the gun blast. So I decided to do it skewed like that and really emphasize his direction of motion and his angle away from wherever the action is taking place. So it kind of uh, lends a little bit more to storytelling and building the scene. So if you were to imagine a whole scene like this, it would be a much grander thing to look at with an enemy far on the other side and he's trying to jump away. A little bit of pen touches and here's the final one. I realize my scanner changes some of my colors, but here's the overall finished product and I'm kind of happy with it. The coloring is nice. Uh, and the overall saturation is nice. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I promise I won't do another Star Fox one for a while, but I'll see you guys soon, and thanks for watching.